Jedson Fernandez. Jedson Fernandez is he's one of the most coveted youngsters around at the moment, if I'm being honest with you. And personally, I hadn't heard of him until this transfer window. I don't play FIFA. I don't play football manager. He wasn't somebody that was largely on my radar. I have gone, actually, and bought a number of shares in him on uh, the football index because he's, he's definitely going to go up in price. He's completed his medical ahead of it formally being announced that he's going to be a Tottenham player for the next 18 months. Remember, we spoke to you a few days ago about Chelsea, who came in and tried to gazump West Ham. West Ham had had a, an 18-month loan move with an obligatory purchase price at the end of that 18 months of £33 million, meaning they had to buy basically a compulsory, a, a compulsory purchase at the end of the 18 months of £33 million for the Benfica midfielder. Chelsea then come in and they offered, I believe it was 60 odd million pounds. It may have been a bit less than that. I need to go and check it. The 18 month loan deal. But the player had to make a certain amount of appearances in the in over the course of the next 18 months. And that percentage was around about 50% of available league games. Uh, and again, but that would have been a put a compulsory a compulsory purchase order at the end of the 18 months. Benfica accepted West Ham's already and then they've accepted what Tottenham have come in with. Now Tottenham have, have done an interesting one. So I don't think they wanted Chelsea's deal because what was the likelihood of, of this young man playing half of Chelsea's league games in the next 18 months? I think there's, there's an element of saying, yeah, that's, that's a little way off. That's a little way off happening because even though Chelsea have been playing a few youngsters recently, I don't necessarily see that trend continuing. A lot of people don't see that trend continuing. With this deal with Tottenham, what's interesting, it's an 18-month loan deal. There's a higher purchase price at the end of that if he stays of 65 million euros, so around 56 million pounds. So Spurs, if they sign him permanently, will spend 23 million pounds more on Jedson Fernandez than West Ham would have done. However, it's only an option to buy. It is not compulsory or mandatory at the end of the 18 months to buy him. So Spurs will have to pay more for the services if they truly want him at the end. But they also get leave themselves in a very safe and secure position. For West Ham, as an example, I think he only had to play in 20% of league games. It was something along those lines. If he plays in 20% of the league games, but he turns out to be an absolute bum, he's absolutely awful, he's absolutely flopped, West Ham have still got to fork out £33 million for this player after paying 18 months of his salary. That's a lot of money for West Ham United. Tottenham, if he flops... They can just say, see you later, mate. Equally, you're talking about a player who at the moment has an £87 million buyout clause on a very long contract. So Tottenham, they've offset the risk. They don't have to buy him at the end of 18 months, but if he's good enough at the end of 18 months, they get him for around about £30 million cheaper than anybody else. Tottenham get the right to buy him, first of all, as an example. But if anybody else at that at that point then wants to jump in and Tottenham pull away, they're going to have to pay £87 million or more. So it's a really interesting deal, a very complex deal, and you can understand why these things take time. I don't know enough about him, though. I am not going to be able to sit here and say he's going to be good, he's going to be bad, he's going to flop, he's going to be the man, because I don't know. I don't watch Portuguese football. I don't watch Benfica. So I want your views on this. I want you people tuning in to tell me what you think of this. Equally, let us just say he plays a fair few games and Tottenham sign him. A lot of people were telling me that Jose Mourinho wasn't going to have money given to him. That Jose Mourinho was going to be told, no, you know, you're not going to be able to open that checkbook. I know it's going to take 18 months until they have to sign him. But Jose's first player at Tottenham is a £56 million pound midfielder. £56 million. Pounds. And what you'll probably find with their option to buy is there'll be a set period of time when nobody else, nobody else's bids will be accepted. I don't know when the dates will be. They say it's probably from like, I'm going to make something up, but it'll be a case of from the 1st of June until the maybe the 20th of June, Tottenham get to play. So there'll be a, a short space where they are the only people that can buy him and they'll get him cheaper. It'll maybe go past a certain date and Tottenham can still buy him, but then it'll become a bidding war of other people. 
But £56 million pound for the first player that, that, that Tottenham buy under Jose Mourinho's reign is massive. And by the way, they've still got, they've still got a left-back situation to resolve. They've still got a right-back situation, a centre-back situation, a secondary striker to replace Harry Kane. They've got to replace uh, Ericsson. There's still so much more money to be spent there. I, I think people are crazy. Genuinely think people are crazy if they think that um, Jose Mourinho is not going to be given more money to spend. They are going to go big. It does beg the question, why didn't they do that for Maurizio Pochettino? I'm not too sure. <laughs> I don't know the answers to that. But we have got the Skype lines open. So if anybody wants to come on the air right now and talk about this deal for Jedson Fernandez, how good is he? Uh, what's he going to add to Tottenham? If anybody knows anything about him at all, I want to hear about it right now. But is anybody shocked that the first signing, the first signing that Jose gets is so, so high in value? I know some people thought nothing was going to be done. We've got Baz here who's calling through on Skype. Hello, Baz. Welcome to the Football Terrace. Who do you support? Uh, Manchester United. You're a Man United fan. We're just talking about this Tottenham deal for a moment. Of course, as a United fan, you're familiar with Jose Mourinho. There was a lot of people of stating that, you know, he was never going to get the checkbook opened at Tottenham. They weren't ever going to spend any money. Are you surprised that the first player that they've signed uh, has a, an option to buy it? At such, a, at such a high price for the first signing of £56 million. Are you, are you surprised Tottenham are willing to spend that much money on a youngster? No, not, not at all, because uh, I know that Jose Mourinho spent a lot of time reflecting on his last couple of jobs. That's definitely the last two and a half years at Manchester United. And I know publicly he said that he, he's the next job he takes is going. He's going to choose it in a smarter way. He's going to make sure he's not naive. Trust that the club is always going to do the right thing. So I'm sure he had talks with Daniel Levy, saying that you know I'm expecting these are the things that I'm expecting. But then I'm sure Daniel Levy also came to Jose and said, "Hey Jose, we're not just going to buy a bunch of 29 year olds and try to win the league that way. We're going to have a longer term type of plan and." you know, we're going to meet in the middle and this is, you know, they probably figured out a plan based on those types of things. Yeah, I, I think we're, to again, Tottenham in a very good position because they do have some elder statesmen who are, you know, in their mid-20s to their late 20s who are still pretty good. Um, so they can afford to focus on buying the, the young, fresh players um, that are coming through. I mean, yourself, have you seen much of Jedson Fernandez? Are, are you familiar with him as a player yourself? Um I watch a few games because I have Dazen here in Canada and I can watch a bunch of all of the Champions League games. So I've seen a bit of Benfica in the past. And yeah, I've seen him, I've seen him a few bit. I mean, I know he's got some talent. Um, yeah. Just like any young player, he kind of goes through ups and downs, peaks and valleys. But I mean, I've seen him probably three times and I thought he was looked like a guy that has some talent. Um, of course, it's... It's, with every young player, there's a risk there. He's going to have to to be nurtured and, and given some time to to, to play to, to adjust to the Premier League. But um, I mean, there's a good chance he could become, you know, a very good midfielder in the Premier League. Yeah. No. Again, that's what I've read about him. He's very, very glowing. I, I just suppose that's the thing, isn't it? It's um, yeah, you know, there's a who's the is an Arsenal. I'm going to skip his name. I think it's Mavropanos, uh, the Arsenal defender, mm -hmm. who has just had a loan move away today to a very average European side. A year to 18 months ago, Arsenal fans were raving about this kid. He was going to be a leading centre-back for them in years to come. He was absolutely on fire. You had Liverpool fans waxing lyrical about Brewster, as an example, Man United fans a few years ago, of course, with Adnan Yanazai. You sometimes, you have these youngsters, all the articles are there, all the scouting reports, you know, all the performances on YouTube, all of the, uh, the you know, the, the FIFA players, oh yeah, he's brilliant on the game. But it sometimes doesn't come to fruition. So it's going to be an interesting one. But I, I just, I personally was just surprised that the first signing could potentially cost £56 million. Pounds. Fair enough, there's an 18-month trial period for him. But if he's good... Um, it's even one of those things, isn't it? He may not even be world-class at the end of that time, but if he's good and effective for Tottenham, they're still in that position where it's like, oh, you know, we, other clubs might come in and buy him if we don't. Um, and 
we've got. If you get, I mean, he <laughs> might end up only being a forty million pound player, but really important for Tottenham. So it's a case of if they don't sign him, somebody else might pick him up for a lot less than the buyout clause because he isn't worth. He's not worth eighty odd million pound anymore because the hype's gone. But equally, Tottenham don't want to have someone. Do you get what I mean? So it's a really interesting deal that yep. it could even. By the way, if he's absolutely sensational. Then they get they could be getting a player that's worth a hundred million pound for fifty six million, but uh, I suppose only the next eighteen months is going and to tell. Was there anything else on your mind? I know you're a United fan. Anything else that you wanted to speak about while you're on Baz? Another thing, quickly on that is that I mean the fact that he's Portuguese and Jose's Portuguese probably helps a little bit as well. Yes. Where you know he could talk to him in their language, they could speak to each other in their language and kind of help the youngster kind of get you know. With, in London and that sort of stuff, just to get it feel more comfortable, probably helps as well. Uh, but one thing I do want to mention is, uh, I'm, I'm obviously over, I know we've talked a lot about this today, but I just want to mention it quickly. Uh, the Bruno Fernandes uh, thing is, is obviously, you know, pleasing. Uh, hopefully we can get the deal over the line. But one thing I don't want to let it get ahead of is that, you know, this is a deal that should have been done last year, last summer. Uh, the club should have had the vision and the realization that this is a player that we need the pr- pr- the, the prospect of what he can do in this team in the beginning of the season. And even if this deal does get over the line, I'm not going to let it cloud my judgment on where the club's at and um, where you know the owners and the management of the club have have been taking it. And the only way that could change changes if we have continued signs of things changing um I, I and not just guys. from yep. buying players but just from a philosophical point of view listen I, I agree completely i'm always willing to change my mind there's, there's only real there's two main major things that would start to make me change my mind about the glazers and that's a case of us becoming successful on the field again buying right running the club correctly and them actually making a conscious effort to continually reduce the debt which they don't seem to do it. It grows, it drops a bit, and then it's back again. Um, you know, if, if by now, for instance, all the debt was paid off, and we were still a successful team, challenging for titles, winning, winning Premier League here and there, and doing well in the Champions League, I could probably stomach them taking dividends. Uh, I wouldn't be happy, sorry, um... but I can stomach it. The issue that you have is they take dividends, the debt grows, they only pay the the, the interest that of paying that debt comes out of what you'd spend on transfers. You know, there's holes in the roof of Old Trafford. You've got an incompetent board up until now. So now I completely agree with you. You know, you, you want to see those things improve as a football club and signing Bruno Fernandes is great. But as, as I, I'm completely on your side, it will not change my, my overarching view um, of the football club. But Baz, I really appreciate you coming on and having your say, mate. Thank you very, very much. Top man. Cheers.